G'day everyone, and welcome to Lubrication Explained. Today we're going to be talking about a really important topic. That is, lubrication and why it actually matters. So something that you might not be completely aware of is that about 20% of the world's total energy consumption just goes into overcoming friction. So it's not doing any useful work, it's not producing power or anything like that. It's it's purely overcoming friction. That's 103 etajoules every year. On top of that, there's an additional 3%, which is purely going into remanufacturing worn parts and spare equipment due to wear and wear-related failures. And we should be thinking of wear-related failures as a failure of lubrication. Now, this Data comes from a 2017 paper that was published in the journal Friction. Believe it or not, there is an entire journal dedicated to the subject of friction. But it goes on to say that we could potentially reduce that amount by about 40% in the long term. And on a global scale, that would be almost 9% of the world's total energy consumption. These are massive numbers. Can you imagine if we were able to avert these losses, how much it would mean for uh, carbon in the atmosphere, how much it would mean for energy savings, and in pure dollars and cents terms, how much money could be saved. Here they're estimating it's about 1.4% of the world's global GDP. But you've got to think that this includes things like the service sector, the IT sector, areas where lubricants does not play a huge role in their businesses. For something like let's say, the mining industry or traditional chemicals and industrial, that number is going to be much bigger. So we're talking that that lubricants could potentially save businesses anywhere between 5 and 10% of their expenses. So let's get into um, what role lubricants really play. And I think the easiest way to do that is to illustrate a simple gearbox. So a gearbox is virtually one of the most simple machines that you can think of. And really, when you think of a gearbox, there's only a couple of inputs. So aside from the gearbox itself, you've got motion, and that's controlled by input torque. And and really, what you want in an ideal gearbox is an input torque translating into an output torque with no power loss. Now, that's an obviously an ideal system. It's not practical, because the other things that we have in here are things like seals and bearings, and we've probably got the lubricant as well. So what role does the lubricant play in the functioning of this gearbox? Well, let's take a look at the contact zone between gear teeth. I think this best illustrates the role that lubricants have to play. So if we were to zoom in on it, it would look something like this. Now, what looks like a really smooth surface on a gear tooth is actually, um, it kind of looks like the Himalayas if you were to put it through a scanning electron microscope. The reason for that is, although modern machining methods have gotten really good and the tolerances are are very, very minute, the fact is, at a certain scale, it still looks rough. Now, what happens here is, we get relative motion as the gear teeth slide past each other. Obviously, at the pitch line, there's rolling motion, but for the rest of it, it's sliding motion. And what you're going to have is the peaks or the largest surface asperities are going to come into contact with each other. Now, how, how can they get past each other? Because the gear teeth still have to move. Well, if we were to zoom in on it, what you would ultimately get is some kind of plastic deformation as the teeth need to kind of get out of the way of each other. What that's ultimately going to lead to is some fatigue at the bottom of that surface asperity. And fatigue cycles cause cracks. So you'll get a crack initiation. Eventually, it will start to propagate along the line. It'll start branching out. The mouth of the crack will open. And eventually, what will happen is that asperity will be removed. That's the beginnings of what we call micro-pitting. And that is a really common failure mode when it comes to gear teeth. Because micro-pitting eventually leads to macro-pitting. And that can usually mean a failure of the gear tooth. And and this is what we mean um, 
when we talk about the importance of lubricants. So this is in a very simple machine, and we can already see if we were to back up again, right, going back through the slides, what we ideally want is a lubricant that can separate the surfaces sufficiently so that when there is relative motion, those asperities just slide past each other. And that's the role that lubricant has to play. Just by that simple change of, of putting a gear oil between the two surfaces, we can avoid massive failures. So that was in a simple scenario. Now let's think of an internal combustion engine, infinitely more complex than a gearbox. Uh, we've got thousands of moving parts. Some people say there's in the order of 3,000 moving parts in a modern day car. And so lubricants have uh, multifunctional roles to play because they need to do things like protect the components from wear, but they also need to prevent corrosion. They have a role in cooling the underside of the piston. Um, ignition temperatures can often be in the ballpark of about 800 degrees, and aluminium, which is the primary uh, uh, piston material, has a melting point of around 660. So without the, the cooling effect of lubricants, pistons would melt. It needs to suspend soot particles, because soot can be a really abrasive material and, and tear, thing, tear engines to shreds. It needs to clean deposits. It needs to form ash to cushion the valves, control varnish, and it has to have excellent low temperature pumpability so that, um, you know, on cold temperature startups, you can still get lubricant flowing around the engine. So this is why lubricant is so important across a wide array of applications and why it's really important to industrial businesses. Thanks for listening to this short presentation on why I think lubricate, lub lubricants matter. This has been Lubrication Explained.